What's up everybody, my name is Steven. This channel is all about hiking, backpacking, and enjoying the outdoors in Southern California and beyond. If that interests you, consider subscribing. Now let's get to my overview and review of the Swift X Pack by Six Moon Designs. The Swift X by Six Moon Designs is designed to be lightweight, durable, and comfortable. In the standard configuration with added stay and hip belt, the Swift X weighs in at 36 ounces or 1,021 grams. Configured as a frameless pack with pack bag and just shoulder straps, the Swift X comes in at 26 ounces or 737 grams. With the vest harness, you'll get additional stability in your load carrying ability, but it brings the weight up to 37 ounces or 1,049 grams. The Swift X has a 36 liter main bag with another 4 liters in the extension collar. In addition to the interior space, the Swift X incorporates two 1 liter side pockets and one larger 3 liter center rear pocket. The two side pockets feature a gusseted bottom and an elastic compression strap on top. The large center rear pocket is perfect for storing the quick access gear you don't want to have to open your pack to retrieve. Six Moon Designs used a four-way woven stretch material for all pockets so gear can breathe and the pockets can last. The Swift X also incorporates a top Y strap with more than enough webbing to accommodate a bear canister, bag of chips, sip pad, or whatever else you want to throw up there. I am also happy to report that the Swift X can in fact hold a full-size bear canister in a vertical orientation. Both the hip belt and shoulder straps incorporate two large pockets each. And the compression straps along the sides of the Swift X allow you to quickly size the pack to your needs. The Swift X also incorporates the following features. Top loading pack with a dry bag closure. Internal zippered stash pocket. single ice axe or trekking pole attachment point, dual hydration ports, removable hydration bladder, sliding sternum straps on the vest and shoulder harness, and a flexible Delrin hoop stay. Just a few weeks ago, I got a chance to do the Trans Catalina Trail. Catalina Island is an island just off the Southern California coast, and it really has one of the coolest trails out there. Depending on how far you want to go, the full trail can be anywhere from 38 miles to about 48 miles. We did what is considered the current Trans Catalina Trail, which is 38 miles. I received the pack from Six Moon Designs a couple days right before the adventure. And initially, right off the bat, I was a little bit apprehensive thinking that, you know, hey, I'm getting this UL backpack. I want to use it on this trip that I'm going on, but I haven't even seen the thing. And I was a little bit apprehensive thinking that not everything that was in my current pack was going to be able to fit in the Swift X. Well, I'm happy to report that actually the capacity of the Swift X was quite surprising. I pretty much took everything that was out of my current pack and packed it right into the Swift X without any sort of adjustment to my packing style. That absolutely blew me away. I was really thinking that this pack was not going to be able to carry everything and it handled everything that I typically take on an adventure without any sort of problem. One of the other things that I really liked about the Swift X pack was actually the fit. I'm a big guy and really it's kind of a toss up sometimes when it comes to packs, if they're going to be able to fit or not. Um, I did get the large harness and I did get the large hip belt, but I'm happy to report that I had to do absolutely no modifications or I didn't have to get any sort of webbing extenders or anything so it can fit over my, my stomach. The pack just fit. There was ample webbing in every single direction to be able to make it work for my you know, body type, which is literally a big guy. So if you're a big guy that's really interested in this pack and you're kind of worried, hey, is this thing actually going to fit me? Or when I get it, am I going to have absolutely no webbing to, to be able to pull on to, to kind of snug up the fit? 
um, you don't have to worry about that because the pack actually fit uh, marvelously. Now, one of the things I really liked about the Swift X was actually the water bottle pockets. Now, it could just be that I'm getting older and I don't have the kind of movement that I used to have in my shoulders, but a lot of times I find it difficult to be able to reach some of the um, water bottle pockets on the packs that I've had uh, over the years. Now, not all of them are difficult, but some of them have been. I'm really happy to report that the Swift X, um, you can reach the water bottle pockets pretty easily. And what else was really cool is that when I had two bottles in one side, I was actually able to reach both of them without any sort of problem. And I was actually able to put both of them back without any sort of problems. I know sometimes it's easy to work with just one water bottle in that water bottle pocket, but when you start getting two bottles in there, sometimes things get a little bit dicey and things get really tight and sometimes they're difficult to take in and out. Um, I'm happy to report that I had absolutely no problem with that. When I had two water bottles in there, no problem at all. At one point I had a water bottle in there and my, my tripod in there. I had no problems being able to reach the bottle, being able to put it back, Really, the implementation that they have on the Swift X with the water bottle pockets was great. I had zero trouble reaching from either side. One other thing that I really like too about the Swift X is that the bottom of the Swift X is rather flat. Now, um, I know this may not seem like a big deal, but I really like the ability to be able to take off a pack and then just be able to set it down on the ground and have it stand up. So let's say I put my pack down and I'm searching for stuff. I don't want to have to worry about it tipping over or have to kind of put it in between my legs to kind of hold it up or maybe find something to lean it up against as I go digging through my pack. I don't understand why more pack makers don't implement that design in their packs. Having a flat bottom would be beneficial to a lot of people when they have to set their packs down. It really boggles the mind that so many packs out there really don't have a flat bottom or they have some kind of a curved bottom. I don't understand. The flat bottom pack to me is one of the best design features ever in a pack. Just to be able to take it off and not have to worry about your pack rolling down a hill. And of course I'm joking, but not having to worry about your pack tipping over or having to find some place to lean it up against is great. It's just nice to set it down and it stands right up when you have to dig through it or when you want to take a picture or set it down and, and step away from it. Just having the pack be able to stand up is a great feature that I really love about the Swift X. The next thing that I really love about the Swift X, which actually surprised me, was the hip belt pockets. Um, again, I don't understand why hip belt pockets are so difficult to get in and out of. I've had a number of different packs from different pack makers over the years, and by far the Six Moon Design version of the hip belt pocket has been by far the easiest to get in and out of. Not only is it easy to open, but it's also very easy to close. The pocket itself is spacious. And the design is, it just feels like it's a more natural movement of the zipper. Uh, I don't know why the, the zippers that go up, that go up and over a pack, um, or rather a hip belt pocket, I don't understand why those are so difficult. Like one direction is super easy to open, but when it comes back to going in the other direction, things get all bound up and it gets kind of difficult and you kind of got to have to, got to tug on it to get it to work. With the Six Moon Design version that was on the Swift X pack that I had, Absolutely no problem. Open, close, smooth as butter as far as the, uh, the zipper went. So that was really nice to not have to fuss with that. Whenever I needed to get into my hip belt pockets, I was able to get in there, in and out quickly without any sort of a problem. The last and final thing that I wanted to discuss was actually on the hip belt again. Now, I don't know what kind of material that they're using on the inside of the hip belt, but I noticed that it was actually very grippy with my shirt material. I wear a Columbia PFG shirt whenever I go backpacking and I don't know if that material works well with what they're doing on the inside of the hip belt, but um, pretty much when I put the pack on, it stuck to my shirt and that was actually very nice because as the day wore on, uh, it was nice to know that the pack wasn't sagging, that it was actually grabbing onto my iliac crest and, and it was riding correctly. Uh, if I had to make any sort of adjustment, I just made a quick adjustment and then it was, it was back to sticking um, without any sort of a problem. So that was really quite surprising to me. I've had, again, a number of packs and um, I don't know, sometimes the material that they use in there makes for a very slippery, uh, very slippery situation where you, you um, put the pack on and then before you know it, about 25 minutes down the trail, 
the pack is starting to sag because it can't grip onto the material of your, uh, of your shirt. So again, I don't know exactly what kind of material that they're using on there, but it seems to work really well with um, shirt material for uh, hiking shirt material. Now, the one and only thing that I didn't like about the pack, and this is by no means any sort of a deal breaker, um, because you can actually fix this problem. I've always enjoyed having shock cord on the back of my packs. It's just kind of a thing that I've done. Um, the way that I like to backpack, I like to be able to put my uh, sit pad on the outside of my pack going up and down on, that, on the back uh, pocket. The SwiftX didn't come with any sort of shock cord, but what was really nice is that all the loops were in there, so I went ahead and I added my own shock cord in there. If there's anything that I would change about the SwiftX for future iterations, is possibly adding that shock cord on the back. Really, that, that to me is a very helpful thing. Um, it really only adds a couple of grams for a lot of functionality, which in my opinion is, is well worth the trade-off. If for some reason or another you don't like that style, you could always take it off. But it would be nice if it actually came with it. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you found it informational or useful, I'd appreciate if you'd give me a thumbs up down below and let me know. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure to click that notification bell as well. That way you'll know every time I post a video. Until next time, take care. Yeah.